Hello everybody and it's welcome back to another episode of Kingdom Hearts Month. It's time for me to talk about my favorite characters in the series. Now note this list was very hard to make, especially with the number 4 and number 5 entry. I might switch them around later in my life, but still. Anyway, this is my now my favorite characters in the franchise. So let's start off with number 10. Number 10 on this list goes to... Number 10 on this list goes to Anakin Skywalker. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, Terra. I'm sorry. I get those, they're pretty much the same character, really. And number 10 on this list goes to Terra from Birth by Sleep. Now, he is easily my second favorite of the Birth by Sleep trio, and he is actually a good character. Now, people compare him to Anakin Skywalker in the prequel movies, and yeah, he's basically Anakin Skywalker, except change the Keyblade to the lightsaber and vice versa. So, yeah, basically. But I actually like Terra, in my opinion, and I like his struggle with keeping the darkness inside of him. Well, granted, Riku is a better example of this, and we'll get to him later, but down the list, but still. Well, also, I like how his willingness to learn, in my opinion, I mean, how he's able to, like, change over time. But his trustworthiness can lead to the worst of his situations, like how his master got killed off, and his soul being attacked, you know, getting ripped apart from him, um, and, you know, you know Xehanort taking over his body. Wow, that's gotta suck, but hey, at least he's got the lingering will. Which is a very hard boss battle, but still a pretty good one. When it, so, yeah, I really do like Terra. Um, I do think he's a nice character, even though he's basically Anakin Skywalker from the prequel movies. But I still rather found him an interesting character. But he's only number 10 on this list because I think the, the next 9 entries are way better. So with that being said, number 9 on this list goes to... Now, the last vessel shall bear my heart like the rest. That's right, number 9 on this list goes to Master Xehanort. He is the main villain, and he is one of my favorite villains of all time. Seriously, Leonard Nimoy just did amazing performance as him. And I like the new guy, but yeah, Leonard Nimoy was clearly superior. Rest in peace, Spock. Look, needs of the many were more than needs of the few. But still, I just love Young and Jose Nord, in my opinion. He's such a calm and collective villain. And also, this is the scariest thing about Young's and Jose Nord, in my opinion. Sorry, there's a lot of Jose Nord, so I get confused. Used. Hey, that's Kingdom Hearts in a nutshell, really. But here's the thing about, about Xehanort that really makes him scary. The fact that he always has a backup plan. If any part of his plan goes wrong, he will have a backup for it. Literally, even the tiniest of details. Like, if he doesn't get the right order at Subway. Or his package doesn't get delivered. He always has a backup plan, people. Well, that's the reason I love Xehanort, in my opinion. He's just pretty much like a chess master, in my opinion. He's pretty much controlling the board, and he's always three steps ahead, which I really do like. Even though because of him, he's screwed over the lives of countless people, but still. And his final battle in Kingdom Hearts 3 was truly epic, in my opinion. And like with Terra, the only reason he's not higher is because of the fact I think the other eight characters on this list are better. That being said, number eight on this list goes to... Pass down that handsome Keyblade, and fulfill your role. Congratulations! Number 8 on this list goes to the Master of Masters. I love this dude. Seriously, he is the most entertaining part of back cover, and I would only watch back cover for, for this guy. Seriously, the voice actor is just giving it a 100 110% of his performance. Really. You can tell in every scene he's in, he's giving it his all, and that's truly amazing. I love the Master of Masters mainly due to the fact that he's the reason for all the events that happen, like Xehanort, and also the fact that he has, like, pretty much the, the eyeball in, you know, Master Xehanort's Keyblade, that's his eye. Kind of disgusting, but hey, who knows? Who's really... Also, I just gotta give mad props to the voice actor again. Seriously, I'm sorry. I already, I know I gave props to him already, but seriously, he's that damn good in my opinion. And he was just perfectly casted in my opinion. Also, you wouldn't expect this character to be so interjected and full of life. You would expect him to be sort of like Yen State, where he's all like... All right, you must do this, this, and this, and boom, you're done. But no, it's like this. Congratulations, you win a prize. He should be on a game show. But the only thing keeping him back from getting higher is that he's barely in the series, really, really. And that would, and if it was in more of him, more than which he is, since Kingdom Hearts series, um, secret ending, which I won't spoil, even though I just did. It, I would greatly put him higher on this list. But either way, he's still a fantastic character, and I loved him in back cover. The only thing really good in back cover, really. And it saved him from being bad. Anyway, number seven. Number seven on this list goes to... Number seven on this list goes to Shion. And, 
yeah, she's a female character in the series. That's really good in my opinion. Now, I've already gone into detail why I liked her in top 14 organization, 13 members. But I'll go over it again. I do like Shion's character arc, how she's trying to find a purpose in life. Sort of like David Dunn. Again, but still. Well, also, her interactions with Axel and Roxas are kind of sweet in my opinion, and they are kind of cute. Though, is it weird that Roxas has a crush for someone who's basically him? Ha, uh, someone who doesn't, who can't get a girlfriend, instead wants to date himself. Oh, loser. But still, she was a nice character, and when she died, I actually had a little bit of tears going down me. Even with that stupid line. But hey, it actually makes sense in context. Since Roxas doesn't really know what friendship is, and only thinks that friendship is basically goofing off and eating ice cream with your friends. So, it kind of makes sense in the context of the game. But still, I really like Shion, and I was greatly impressed with her in Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, spoilers, sorry. I should have put a spoiler warning. Spoiler warning, people. But still, she's really good, even though she's my least favorite of the sea salt ice cream trio. Anyway, number six on this list goes to... Me. I'm already half Xehanort. Number six goes to Zigbar. Okay, how can you not love this character? I love how sarcastic he is, and even though he's ranked two in the organization, he doesn't really act like a rank two. In fact, instead of bossing people around to go on missions, he's the one who does most of the missions, really, besides Roxas, and, you know, he's the main character of 358, but still. You know. Also, you just gotta love the voice actor for him. He is just so much fun to watch, and I just love almost every scene he's in. I flat out love Zigbar, and that plot twist in Kingdom Hearts 3 actually makes sense, really. Really, given context of his character and the other character, but still, Sigmar was a really awesome character, and I'm greatly looking forward to more of him. Anyway, number five on this list, and I'll fully admit this and the number four entry were kind of hard to rank between. So, number five on this list goes to. Number five on this list goes to the main character himself, Sora. Donald and Goofy. I'm just kidding. It just goes to Sora. Sora is a really good protagonist, and you can honestly kind of relate to him, in my opinion. You know, since he's just a child at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts One, One, and he's kind feels kind of like an accident why he was given the Keyblade. But yeah, in my opinion. Also, you can really get the sense that he really cares about his friends deeply, especially Riku and especially Gairi, since he and Gairi are I have a thing with each other. I mean. Pretty much the power of in, in this universe is basically like a wedding ring. Do you, Kairi, take Sora to be your husband? Yes, I do. Do you take Kairi to be your wife? Yes. Then you may now put the Palpu fruit on her hand. And then you two must both share the Palpu fruit. But anyway, I just really like Sora, and I'm glad to see more adventures from him. Sora, I'm, even though you got Thanos at the end of Kingdom Hearts, so you still are a really good protagonist, and I really enjoy you as a character. Though, to be fair, in Dream Drop Distance, he was a little too naive for my liking. But, anyway, that goes for Sora. Number four on this list goes to... The three of us would agree to work on the raft. And then this guy would go take a nap on the beach. Anyway, number four on this list goes to Riku. I love Riku as a character. Don't get me wrong, I like Sora and all, but I kind of prefer Riku. Mainly because I think his character arc is much more endearing, and him going from bad to good is much more engaging, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, like with Terra, he pretty much goes down a dark path, but I think this is done way better in my opinion, since you actually feel the desperation he does. And at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1, he wasn't really that big of a bad guy, he was just corrupted by Ansem and wanting to find Kairi, so he wasn't that bad of a human being. And him getting the title of Keyblade Master in the end of Dream Drop Distance was kind of satisfying in my opinion. And he's basically sort of like Zuko and Kevin Eleven, where he does have a good character arc and I really do enjoy playing as Riku a lot. He does level up much faster than Sora due to his more style of combat, and I just love Riku as a character, really. But he was close to making it in the top three, but I think the others are just way better, in my opinion. Anyway, number three on this list goes to... Looks like my summer now, this and the number two entry were very hard to rank. I constantly went back and forth, and for right now, number three on this list goes to Roxas from Kingdom Hearts. I love Roxas and his character development, really. Seriously, Roxas is kind of like a tragic character when you really get down to it. He thought that he had a real life, but it was all a lie, and it was just someone else's, and when he thought he had real best friends like Hainer, Pence, and Alette, it was just Data. Hey, still better Data than Kingdom Hearts Recut, am I right? But seriously, Roxas is just such an interesting character, and he's really sympathetic. You feel bad for him, and you want him to have a good life, in my opinion. 
you honestly feel tragedy for him. And his boss battle reflects that in my opinion with the music and the fact that you're able to pretty much block all of his attacks except for those homing shots. Roxas is an amazing character and I loved almost every moment with him. I mean, that's why he is in the top three. Number two on this list goes to... Number two on this list goes to Aqua. Now, people say that Aqua isn't very good as a character, but I highly disagree. I think she is, without a shadow of a doubt, the best female character in the entire franchise. Yes, the number one entry is a male. Don't call me a sexist, but still. Well, Aqua is a very kind character. You really get the sense that she cares about Terra and Ventus. She acts sort of like their mother in a way, when you always clean up the messes. And in Kingdom Hearts of Fragmentary Passage's opening, you really honestly get that sh that feel of her wanting to protect Terra and Ventus, and it's really cool. People said in Birth by Sleep her voice acting was not very good, but I thought in some scenes, like for example when Zack asked her on a date, I think her reaction was natural since she never knew what a date really was. But still, I really like Aqua, and I think she's a really nice character to the franchise. Anyway, now then, let's finally end this list so we can get up, so the way the next list can end, so we can get us on the next list. So that means... Number one on this list. Who could it possibly be? Who could possibly be number one? You probably know who it is by now if you know who I am, but still. Number one on this list goes to... Axel, please. The name's Lee. Got it memorized. Yep, that's right. Number one on this list goes to Axel slash Lee. How can I not love this character? Seriously, I've already gone into full detail why I love him in the past, but I'll just say it again. His personality is amazing. His character writing is really good. His development is amazing, and I just love Axel all around. How can you not love Axel? He is such a fan favorite that they had to bring him back in Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. That is awesome, in my opinion. Also, you honestly really care about him and about him with his relationships with Roxas, Shion, and Syax, and you honestly want him to get them back, which is really good, in my opinion. Also, this guy got a Keyblade, and it was able to make Master Yen Sid drop his jaw to the ground. That is amazing, in my opinion. Seriously, what else could I say about Axel? Other than, we did, in fact, got it memorized. Axel, you're an amazing character, and one of my all-time favorite characters, not just in gaming, but in fiction as a whole, and that's why you definitely earned this number one spot. Anyway, I'm Sean, and see you all later in the top nine Kingdom Hearts games. See you all later, and peace.